Can you hear me? Once again, it is such a great privilege and honor to stand here and welcome you to the City of Gold, to Johannesburg, to South Africa, and to One Young World 2013. And I hope that you are ready for what awaits you this coming week, a journey of a lifetime, a life-changing journey. And now we'd like to start off the proceedings of the evening in the proper manner. So please, here to lead us in the singing of the national anthem, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Grammy and Emmy Award winning Soweto Gospel Choir. Ladies and gentlemen, the Grammy and Emmy Award winning Soweto Gospel Choir! Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you. You may all be seated. And you will be seeing them a bit later on as well. You'll be seeing them later on with a special guest star that I promise once she gets onto the stage, she will absolutely blow your minds away. But now, let's, let's, let's talk about this evening. It's all about One Young World 2013. Here you are this evening in Johannesburg. A very proud city indeed. I'm going to ask our friends there. Poland. Matimbros. Poland. 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 Please, thank you. We do need to start off with the evening's proceedings. As I was saying, it's such a proud moment to welcome you to Joburg, this very proud city indeed. And I, thought, I know that many of my South African brothers and sisters, the youth, might be asking, why now? Why South Africa? Why Johannesburg? And it's because the time is now. Africa is rising. South Africa is rising, and it's all happening right here. You are the young people from the most important city in Africa, Johannesburg, and it's amazing to be here right now. Let me give you a bit of a background. This city is the economic hub of South Africa. Movers and shakers of South Africa come here to test out their metal in all forms of industry. Historically wise, we said it a bit earlier on, in 1995, the Rugby World Cup was hosted here. And in one swoop after that glorious, glorious strike by the legendary Joel Strunsky, 
This country won the Rugby World Cup, thus uniting this nation like never before under sports and of course under the leadership of our legendary president, the great Mr. Nelson Mandela. Also, in 2010, this very stadium that you're sitting in tonight hosted the opening and the closing ceremonies of the FIFA World Cup. Once again, a milestone in this country's history. And as we come here tonight, this is also a moment in history because One Young World is being hosted on African soil for the very first time. And I think that deserves a huge One Young World applause. Now, let's also take a moment right now. We have a video clip from, for you that comes from His Worship, the Executive Mayor of the City of Johannesburg, Councillor Mpo Parks Dao, to officially welcome you to Johannesburg. Please take a look. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Park Stau, Executive Mayor of the City of Johannesburg. Let me, on behalf of the City of Johannesburg, welcome all delegates to the One Young World Summit. Let me also acknowledge the presence in Johannesburg today of Mr. Kofi Annan, Sir Bob Geldof, Ms. Kate Robinson. In particular, let me acknowledge the presence of the Freeman of the City of Johannesburg, Mr. Ahmed Kaplan. I want to acknowledge, of course, the presence of the 20 delegates of Johannesburg that will be present at this conference and the more than 100 delegates of South Africa. We wish you all well in your deliberations and productive participation in the summit. In our respective cities, we have a responsibility to grow young people to ensure that they assume the responsibilities of leadership, but also ensure that they get exposure to networks and partnerships with their peers and colleagues. I will over the weekend be present as we hand over to our colleagues in Dublin. I leave you in the capable hands of our acting executive, Mayor Councillor Ruby Matam, who would speak to you on behalf of the city. Thank you very much. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the acting executive mayor of Johannesburg, Councillor Ruby Matang. Program Director, the City Manager, other officials present here today, One Young World co-founders David James and Kate Robertson, One Young World Councillors, One Young World 2013 Advisory Board members. 2013 summit delegates that are here from all over the world, members of the media, sponsors, distinguished guests. Exactly 50 years ago, the world, 50 years ago, the world was inspired by the leadership and convictions of the late Dr. Martin Luther King, who galvanized the struggle for equality and full civil rights in the United States of America. Right here in Johannesburg, South Africa, our own struggle against minority domination for freedom and liberty for the majority of South Africans reached its own apex at exactly the same time. Many of the icons of our liberation movement, including three prominent people who have received freedom of our great city, Nelson Mandela, Ahmed Katrada, Walter Sisulu, were preparing to stand, to stand trial on charges of high treason against the apartheid regime. Making a statement from the dock only hours before he was sentenced to serve lifetime imprisonment on Robben Island, Nelson Mandela, recalled his own journey to political and social consciousness and his commitment to give up his life if need be 
in pursuit of the ideals of freedom for his people. I quote, during my lifetime, I have dedicated myself to the struggle of the African people. I have fought against white domination, and I fought against black domination. I've cherished the ideal of a democratic and free society in which all persons live together in harmony with equal opportunities. It is an ideal for which I hope to live for and to achieve. But if needs be, it is an ideal for which I'm prepared to die." Close quote. More than 14,000 kilometers, kilometers away in the city of Atlanta, Dr. Martin Luther King was putting final touches on an inspirational book with the title, Strength to Love. The ultimate measure of a man, he wrote, is not where he stands in a moment of comfort and convenience, but it is where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Dr. King was only 26 years old when he led the Alabama bus boycott and started a march across America igniting civil rights movement. Our own Nelson Mandela was barely 30 when he was first elected as provincial president of the African National Congress and embarked on his long walk to freedom that culminated in his election as South Africa's first democratic president. Today in the city of Johannesburg, a new generation of young leadership are gathered to confront new challenges open up new frontiers, and offer new solutions to the issues the world is facing. Program Director, Mr. Kofi Annan, our highly respected former General Secretary of the United Nations, Sir Bob Gildoff, Ms. Kate Robinson, distinguished delegates that are here, I am delighted to welcome you to one of the youngest major cities in the world, a city born out of humankind's quest for mineral wealth, started by entrepreneurs, built by the labor of local communities, strengthened by a bustling commerce and trade sector, enriched by immigrants from India, Europe, Somalia, Bangladesh, Kenya, and the rest of our African continent. This is particularly youthful city on a youthful continent. Exactly half of our population is under the age of 34, and some 42% is younger than 24. This has the potential to create a very exciting, dynamic, and vibrant society with a strong emphasis on innovation enterprise, and creativity. It is a great opportunity for Johannesburg to host a conference of such importance, attracting more than 1,200 delegates from about 190 countries. It is also a great opportunity for us as the city of Johannesburg to showcase the youth talent that we have. The city is sending 20 delegates to the summit were proud of their brilliance, their devotion to humanity, their commitment to make a difference in the lives of those around them. Through this, the city is inv investing in the youth and in so doing, investing in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, in recent years, Johannesburg has become synonymous with the hosting of major global events, conferences and exhibitions. Three years ago, the entire world watched the drama of the 2010 Soka World Cup unfold right here in this beautiful stadium. For a brief period in time, we would place the worries of global conflict and human tragedy somewhat on the back banner while we celebrated the wonder of youthful skills and achievement on the playing field. 
Tonight, we again have the youth of the world convened in a single venue in the city of Johannesburg. Again, we meet against a backdrop of rising tensions, simmering wars, and continuing wars, and continuing concerns about global inequalities, endemic poverty, and the denial of rights to women and children in many societies. But also we meet in a spirit of hope and expectations. Ladies and gentlemen, delegates, as, a, as someone who grew up in the liberation struggle, I'm, a, I'm of a firm believer in the conventional wisdom that says the youth is the leadership of tomorrow. In a rapidly changing world, we simply don't have the luxury anymore to marginalize the youth from decisions and processes that affect their daily lives. We cannot tell the youth that they should wait their turn before they can undo the harm they do by climate change, before they can offer solutions for endemic poverty, hunger and diseases, before they can campaign for respect of the rights of women and children, before they can confront warmongers and dictators hell-bent on global destruction. It is therefore encouraging to note that one of the primary slogans of One Young World is that it is the organization where young people start leading. And I'm inspired both by the variety and relevance of your agenda as you discuss issues of great pertinence to our society. In a few months' time, the mayors and decision makers of the world's largest city will meet here in Johannesburg for the C40 Summit on Climate Change. For the first time, this important gathering will, make, will take place in Africa, and it is clear recognition of the growing importance of the Global South in international affairs. I want to appeal to the summit in the city in October 2030 to send a very clear message to the forthcoming Jobek C40 summit in February 2014 that we cannot continue with business as usual approach to climate change and resource issues. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I trust that you will thoroughly enjoy your stay in our city. I trust that you will take time off with your busy schedule to explore, experience, and enjoy our city. The iconic places where most of hosted the unique music, culture, and cuisine of the world African city. I wish you an enjoyable conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Mumatango, and also. Thank you very much. Also, a very big thank you I must convey to um, Councillor. Mayor Dao, and I'm sure that uh, you all are looking forward to a great event. You will all be seeing him on Saturday, of course, at the closing ceremony when he will be presenting the host city baton over to the 2014 host, uh, Dublin. So look out for that. Now, just a, a quick point, please, my friends, on this side, and everyone on this side. This is very important, please. As I've asked before, that when someone is on stage addressing you, please, you must keep quiet so you can hear what they say. The mayor quoted a very important thing here, saying that this is where young people start to lead. In order to be a good leader, you must be a good follower. Can we please get some calm there? Thank you very much. Guys, this is very important. This is where we start. We want to start off on a very, very good note. But let me not uh, waste any further time. I've got to introduce you to a group, a group of people without whom this would not have been possible. And they are the Johannesburg Advisory Board. I'm going to start off with Mr. Peter Burden first, who is the Africa Bureau Chief of BBC. Now, Peter supported uh, from a media advisory perspective, and he helped to secure the support of the BBC, both locally, around Africa, and internationally. Please give him a round of applause. And we move on to James Donald, who is the CEO of uh, Grassroots Soccer. Now, James and Grassroots Soccer took care of all the complicated arrangements in getting all of the 8,000 local group of friends here with us here tonight. And they, of course, are doing some amazing work. Thank you very much, James. 
next up, Tulani Fakude of BEE123 by Pastel, who is a one Young World 2011 ambassador from South Africa, and he's proven his worth as, a, as an ambassador. He's helped secure delegate sponsors, convened ambassadors' caucus meetings throughout the year. Thank you very much, Tulani. Next up, Francesco Fattori, who is uh, from uh, Rickard Benkinser. Uh, he's the Senior Vice President of Regional Director in Africa. And of course, his support was invaluable as he strengthened the involvement of the organization. Thank you so much, sir. A round of applause, please. We move on to Nelly Swa Fende from Spring Age, and she's also One Young World 2011 ambassador, South Africa. <laughs> she's done some great work in her efforts throughout and have all been in great support, of course, of this great event. Thank you so much. Next up, Professor Anton Harbour, who can't be here with us tonight, but we must thank him. Professor uh, uh, Anton is a, is a Caxton Professor of Journalism at the University of Wits, and he also did a great deal of work in spreading the news of One Young World to all universities across South Africa, especially the University of Wits, and of course, he's spread also on social media where he's got substantial support, so thank you very much to him. Then, Lynn Madeley, CEO of Harvest Southern Africa for Harvest Worldwide. Give a round of applause, please. And of course, she helped to convene the advisory board. She drove membership and commitment, and uh, Lynn and her team at Harvest Worldwide South Africa have created a unique digital channel uh, for conversation platforms. So all of you who are very active on social media, you can actually engage in the channel by using text, by using Mixit, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, following hashtag OYW. And of course, there are many other hashtags that will come up as the plenary sessions go on. Thank you very much, Lynn. We move on to Puti Mahanyele, who's the CEO of Shanduka Group. Please welcome her onto the stage. Now, Puti has supported the initiatives of One Young World Ambassadors uh, in South Africa since 2011. She's the chairman of Global Dignity, and as such, she's passionate about the impact and engagement of young people world, the world over. We move on to Pelisa Mangu who is the acting CEO of Johannesburg Tourism for the city of Johannesburg. Now, Pelis's team have driven the bid for the, the city of Johannesburg to host the One Young World. Uh, since early 2011, she granted uh, the right to host the city. They've been working so hard. It's great to see you again. Please welcome onto the stage. We now move on to the CEO of Brand South Africa, Mr. Miller Madola. Now, Mr. Miller has uh, supported One Young World since the early days of the bid process, and he and his team supported the One Young World team to gain visa-free entry systems into the country. That's making it a lot easier for us to all be here. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Next up, Rich Mkorda, who's the executive of corporate affairs at the MTN Group. And of course, they are the national host sponsor of One Young World Summit 2013. They're doing some great work. In, uh, they've they've uh, had delegates uh, partner up since 2011 in Zurich. And each year, they send delegates from 20 plus African, Middle East, and Middle Eastern countries. And they'll be hosting some great talks throughout the summit. We move on to Marlene Moodley, who's the head external relations of Sub-Saharan Africa, McKenzie and Company. Welcome. Now, Marlene has offered great support throughout the year in engaging effectively with, oh, with uh, One Young World Ambassadors and with McKenzie and Company. She has created a bespoke mentorship program as ambassadors based in South Africa take part in. Thank you. Welcome. And now, Mr. Trevor Mube, the Executive Deputy Chairman of Mail and Guardian, and his support throughout the year has been involved in advertising uh, and media support of the Mail and Guardian, as well as a public search throughout Africa via uh, Mail and Guardian networks for two outstanding delegates with technical and digital-based communities uh, making impact in those communities. They're here to champion the, the uh, summit this year. Next up, I'm sure somebody whom you all know, Catherine Peter, who's the Africa Director of One Young World. She's done a great, amazing work in growing One Young World. She moved over from London, coming over to Africa. And she's, she's grown the numbers in a huge kind of way since her first year from 18 to this year, where we see all 54 African countries represented, the first in any event in the world. Well done, Catherine. Next up, Nambidu. Betana, who's the city of Johannesburg group head of communications and tourism and she and her team have led the city of Johannesburg's official hosting and sponsorship of the summer 2013 securing the support of the opening ceremony all the security the marketing the everything that you see over here they made possible thank you so much to you and your team 
Next up, Mr. Marcus Soro of Wagner Edge from South Africa. He's the managing director over there, Marcus, and his team have supported One Young World since 2011. Great to see you here, sir. And they've been building relationships with a whole lot of media that's giving exposure to One Young World all across South Africa, all across Africa as well. Next up, Nolita Fakude, Sasol Limited's executive director, who's also the chairperson of the advisory board, and she and her team, and she as a chair, chairperson, led the advisory board, and she served to create a strong, committed group that is determined to ensure the brilliant summit with a powerful legacy that will last on in South Africa and, of course, the continent. Last but not least, Mr. Jeff Rothschild, who's the head of government and, head, uh, and international affairs of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Welcome to you, sir. And he has been instrumental to the One Young World Africa team with the relationships, the contacts, the advice, and the moral support that he has offered in making this possible. Ladies and gentlemen, please, one more One Young World round of applause for the Johannesburg Advisory Board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we move on, guys. I'd like to introduce you to a man who's uh, at the head of an organization that has made it its mission to empower young South Africans by ensuring that all stakeholders prioritize youth development through identifying and implementing solutions that address youth development issues. Now, One Young World, please welcome the chairperson of the South African U National Youth Development Agency, Yershin Pillay. Round of applause, please. Viva One Young World, viva! Viva! Viva One Young World, viva! Viva! We are young and we are alive! We are young and we are alive! <laughs> Distinguished guests, young leaders of the world, it is a great honor for me to stand here today and welcome you all, the great young patriots of our different nations, to the young, One Young World Summit 2013. The world has become one big global village through interconnectedness, through global communications, making it easier for communities to share same interests and concerns. While the age of technology has fostered the idea of a unified global community, it becomes important for real-time interactions among young people of the world especially to share similar goals and objectives. For this reason, the National Youth Development Agency, South Africa's premier agency on youth development matters, has embraced the idea of the One Young World Global Movement as a platform to bring together the youth of the world to participate in critical discussion that will help shape the future. As young leaders, we must be like lions, brave, courageous, and just, providing solutions to the problems of the world that, we, that the world faces. As this summer takes place in Africa for the first time, we urge all young people who have been given this opportunity to participate in this summit to grab it with both hands and make the most of it. In South Africa, we say nothing about the youth without the youth. Only we as the youth of the world can change the world. I urge you to take this opportunity to make lasting connections, creating lasting positive change. 1,000 or more youth have gathered here in the city of Johannesburg from more than 130 countries to solve or help to shape the discussions needed to solve the challenges we face as the world. Any lessons learned as part of our discussions and interactions at this summit must find expression and result in lasting positive change in the communities we come from. We want to welcome you all on behalf of the youth of South Africa to this great nation and we are confident that your stay will spark the change that we need to see for a better, more prosperous world order. I thank you. Yes, please. A big round of applause for Mr. Yershin Pillay, the chairperson of the National Youth Development Agency, as well as the Johannesburg Advisory Board. Thank you very much for joining us, and thank you for the amazing work that you do to make this possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great to see you. Thank you. And now, 
ladies and gentlemen, you all realize the one big thing about One Young World is that delegates are amazing leaders in their own right. And the impact that One Young World makes um, when you leave the summit, it doesn't just stay here. That creative, positive energy gets carried with you. And it's all about making that difference when you go out there back into your communities, having formed those bonds, those friendships, and those relationships with your fellow delegates, that you take that with you and you go back home and you make a real change. Now, we want to show you just some of the amazing things that have been done over the past couple of months. Please cast your eyes to the screens. Wherever we are, we can make a difference. Your creative powers, your command over technology, can change the world just like that. I truly believe that your generation has our future in your hands. Yeah, you can be the greatest, you can be the best. You can be One of the, the coolest best. things about this experience is the impact that it's having on people like yourself and myself, inspiring us to see what can be done. A 17-year-old Eton student has just made history as the youngest person to make not one, but three journeys to the North Pole. This is largely part of a larger, sort of more significant mission to do with climate change. We have so much power at our fingertips. With social media, we're so connected, and we have the ability to mobilize groups of people to take action. There ought to be an addendum about what we're actually going to do to turn our good intentions into real changes. I'm going to be sharing messages of what homophobia is, what homophobic bullying looks like, and, and the impact that it has on other people. I'm going to introduce an organization called School Bag that provides school supplies to students in places like Haiti. It's the simplest things that make the biggest difference. When the media and my professors tell me that I'm part of the lost generation, I can't stand it. The future is now. My name is Clinton Gachangi. I am a One Young World ambassador. But we cannot simply sit and wait for things to happen. Malala didn't. The idea of combining uh, forces, old and young, I think is a wonderful idea. Right to break barriers, right to destroy boundaries, right to push for peace, right to spread compassion. Young people are getting pulled into these discussions. Canada, Australia, America. One young world, I know some stay. I think it's important to create this concept of transnational leadership. It is in our power to make the world anew. It's not in my power anymore. It is in yours. Go ahead and do it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the founders of One Young World, Kate Robertson and David Jones. So thank you, Cat Lego. Can we give a huge round of applause to Cat Lego? Amazing job. We'll be seeing you later. Hello and welcome to One Young World 2013 in Johannesburg. And we'd like to hear those Vuvuzvelas go off, please. Kate. I am 
especially proud to be here. This is the place where I was born, and it is an honor to be able to bring One Young World home. And now, it's also an honor to introduce you to the Sassel South African National Youth Orchestra. They're going to play for you. Hello. Can we have the orchestra, please? Can we have the orchestra, please? Are you there? Yeah, we're ready. Bring the they orchestra in. They are coming. Okay. okay. Play for Rosales. <laughs> So it's, um, it's absolutely what, wonderful. I want to tell you something. So I want to tell you something. Hold on. Okay? So it's an, it's an amazing device to be able to fill any pauses in, the, in tonight's ceremony, but we now have the orchestra, please. <laughs> Are they Bring ready? Bring them on. Yes. They're over here. Orchestra, please. Somebody, orchestra, please. Don't be shy. Here we go.
Weren't they fantastic? Yes, Soweto Youth Orchestra. Thank you to them. And I would just like to add a special word of thanks here to the chair of the One Young World Summit, Johannesburg Advisory Board. You saw her earlier, Nolita Fakude, the executive director of SASOL. Big chair. Thank you, Nolita. Thank you. So we have huge expectations of One Young World 2013 in Johannesburg. And to allow uh, the crew behind me to seamlessly change the set to allow us to welcome our famous councillors, but more importantly, to demonstrate to you what happened at One Young World 2012 in Pittsburgh and why we are hoping and expecting that One Young World 2013 in Johannesburg is even better. Here's a short video with the highlights of One Young World last year. So if we could play that video, please. a lot of new people and I also want to stand, understand what sustainability means to them because it means a lot to me. I really want to get uh, those people ideas about their democracy and I want just to apply it and bring it back to Iraq. I'm hoping to attend the breakout sessions discussing global health and governance. I'm here to learn more about health, education and leadership. Get to know more about NGOs, entrepreneurship. A lot of us are just on the outside looking in and we need to now come together and make decisions. I'm here to meet people, to get inspired. It's a fusion of beautiful ideas. I guess I'm also really excited about the chance to show people my hometown of Pittsburgh. The world is not sustainable, it's too unstable and it's too unequal. All the big challenges you will face will be in one of those three categories. What we're suffering from in a period of transition, and indeed in every historic period of transition, is a chronic lack of leadership. Money is not an excuse for good food. The best food in the world has always come from the poorest communities. Okay? It's knowledge, education. It was a wicked and wild wind Blew down the doors to let me in Shattered windows in the sound Each one of you can design a social business. Creativity is the power. Technology is the power. That's what you got. I want to show that big doesn't necessarily mean bad, and that it's not only small, that is beautiful. We've built the entire company around the idea of transparency. Let's go to the solutions and the actions. Superheroes are just regular people that decide to put on a cape, right? Decide to be great, to put on their greatness. This is for everybody who ever thought that they were powerless and couldn't make a difference. One person can empower an entire community. There is no can't, there is no won't, only how. Large organizations have to take responsibility for their own behaviors and actions. The times are changing. It's a moment in time to seize, really it is. I'm enormously proud to be wearing one of those t-shirts. It's either help others and live a lie or run away and be myself. Que alguns jovens, assim como eu, pode também ter essa experiência. So that other young people like myself can also have this experience someday. Thank you. I want to thank you for all that you're doing and all that you will do to make life on our planet as beautiful as our planet is visibly beautiful from space. And I think the soundbite and tweet probably of, of One Young World this year will be the key is we. Okay, so 